Hello everybody, welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix and today I'm going to share with you a metaphor called the, the puzzle metaphor, the love puzzle. So the way I see love, and this is more from an approach of an open relationship and not needing to exclusively commit yourself down one pathway with any one particular person. And maybe, you know, you, you can just devout, devote yourself to one person but this counts more so to being open still to sharing experiences intimate with other people. So if you look at everybody in life as a, as a piece of a, a great puzzle, a jigsaw piece, so to speak, and if you allow yourself to be open to click in with all these individual pieces, they've all got their own part of the picture, the big picture to provide. And as soon as you click in, they reveal a lot more detail and a lot more meaning in your life and they add to your greater picture in terms of what you learn in terms of your growth and big picture growth so I think there are many benefits to being open I think there are many benefits to being able to intimately click with different pieces abroad different pieces on the board I think there are benefits to expanding that greater picture and giving it more definition and uh, I think if you try you know, to take the monogamous route just because that's what's socially conditioned as to be the most acceptable, you know, most typical way to go about love and partnership. I think sometimes people get a little bit too heavy in their expectations of their partners and they expect them to be able to provide in all ways emotional and physical, mentally, spiritually, to the point where if somebody doesn't fit enough, you know, maybe they're really good physically, great in bed, and maybe they're emotionally attentive, but maybe they're dumb as a doorman nail and they don't really provide conversation, and they're not too mentally, you know, entertaining. Then sometimes you'll find that a partner, dissatisfied because they're not getting all of the voids of their puzzle piece filled, so to speak, because this person only has a few tabs that he can provide, the other tabs aren't quite the right size. They don't really fulfill those needs and those wants for the, uh, the mental, spiritual connection. So they start getting out the hammer and the scissors, right? Start cutting things up for shape and trying to hammer in the pieces so that they fit. All right, you know, they start trying to change each other so that it, you know, each partner provides essentially what the other wants, what the other needs. And of course there is a whole thing where, you know, if you're not getting the conversations you want with your partner, you can find it with your friends and that's what your friends are for. But ideally, you want to find the one or group of ones that can provide you with everything you need and are going to be with you uh, on your journey and can share your journey with through and through. So instead of bringing out the hammer and the scissors and trying to force and shape your partner to provide everything you need on your plate, which can be quite heavy, I think the benefits to being open with this pu puzzle metaphor if, if one person clicks in perfectly emotionally and physically, but they don't satisfy your mental needs, you need conversation to be mentally stimulated, or you know they need to be spiritually inspired because maybe they lack ambition, you can click with somebody else who fills those voids, who has those tabs on their piece that can click in perfectly. And because of that, you're not gonna be putting all this extra strain and expectations and weight and pressure on the other piece that's not providing these things because you don't expect to receive everything you need from one person. You'll get whatever you need abroad. Right? So there's one benefit there that I think you know, people like exclusive relationships because a lot of them are based on uh, insecurity. It's like, you know, I don't want you being open to seeing other people because what if they have a bigger dick than me? What if they're more entertaining? What if you want to be with them instead of me? What if I lose you? Ultimately, and out of this fear of loss and this selfish need to be possessive and keep someone else to oneself, people place these rules and silent contracts or explicit contracts stating that you can't do this and this and this with other people. Only me, 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 me. Real love doesn't have to keep a chain or a leash on somebody. You know, real love doesn't need to attach a leash. I think if it's real love, then each partner should commit to each other and devote to each other and do everything they want to do to, with each other as much as they want to without needing to be prompted, without needing to be uh, restricted. And at the end of the day, if it's real, they will end up coming back to each other, you know? 
and that tide will remain strong. It doesn't need to be manipulated with rules from the outside. So, I think if we stopped acting out of a place of insecurity in our relationships and a selfish need to be possessive, just because we feel inadequate and we're worried we're going to be replaced, and if we realize that, fuck, we can't be replaced, because every single person, every single piece on the board provides something different, provides details of the bigger picture that no one else can replicate. Everyone's unique. Every puzzle piece is unique. So really, there's no logical reason to be fearful of being replaced, to be fearful that another piece on the board is going to click into your partner and provide them with the same sense of meaning and satisfaction and the same picture that you provide when you click with them. You know what I'm saying? You're irreplaceable. And unless you're really so inadequate, feelings of inadequacy and you're fearful that you don't provide enough, you've got no reason to be worried about being replaced because that's impossible. And really, you shouldn't be with somebody if you really do feel that inadequate because then you start getting possessive and needy and it's more about filling your void for your self-esteem than it is actually about being an individual who's got confidence, who's independent, who's in control and who happens to want to share their life alongside someone else who's also in the same position. You know, if you're weak, if you're afraid, then it changes the nature of it. And that's when you start developing emotional addictions and addictions to people, which there's another segment on. So I won't touch on that now. So I think that, you know, for me, I used to be really kind of fearful when I started dating at 15 about, you know, this girl might find someone else, blah, yada, yada. And if my girl even kissed another guy, my girl, right? If she kissed another guy, I'd fall apart. I'd cry, I'd break down. And it took some time, but within seven, eight years later, it got to the point where my girlfriend gave fellatio to another guy at a party. She told me in detail about what happened. And I said, well, did he give it to you back? And she said, no, he just left. And I said, well, that's a bit rude. And that's what pissed me off the most. Like, nothing pissed me off at all about the fact that she gave this guy fellatio that she had a crush on, apparently, even though she was my girlfriend. Because I changed the way I looked at things, my perspective. I changed from being a an, uh, uh, dependent, inadequate, fearful, possessive type of guy. And I accepted that, okay, let's go on and have fun with another guy. It's just physical. She, he can't give her anything that I can give her. I got nothing to worry about, you know? And what really upset me the most was the fact that he didn't reciprocate it. That he didn't show her the respect of giving her pleasure in return. That's what, what got up under my skin. Isn't that funny? So, I full and did a full turnaround in the way I looked at everything and how I felt about everything. To the point now when I'm with somebody and I'm hearing details about what they've been doing elsewhere with other people, it might actually turn me on a little bit, you know? And I find that it keeps the flame alive instead of taking each other for granted, instead of things getting boring. It's like as soon as your girl or your guy goes somewhere else, sleeps with someone else and comes back to you, and that first time, you know, you get in the bedroom again together, it's like you're re-sparking everything, you know? It's like you're reclaiming your territory and the passion is uh, rejuvenated, the passion is reignited. And you don't take each other for granted because there is that, that feeling in the air always that, yeah, okay, she might have a better connection with someone else, a stronger connection than she does with me, or vice versa, he might have it with someone else, another girl or guy. Mm. But like I said, we shouldn't let those fears uh, determine the course of our relationship as much as our respect for each other as individuals, our respect for each other's freedoms, needs, and wants, and our respect for each other if they can't get all their needs and wants satisfied by one person alone, all right? So that's the basic idea, puzzle philosophy. There are many benefits to allowing many pieces to click. There's no need to feel insecure if you let other pieces click in with your piece because every person, every piece provides something unique and it cannot be replaced, it can't be substituted. So that's the basic idea. You guys can go about your business any way you want. Uh, but personally, I think the, the pros way outweigh the cons. It's a bit of a difficult transition, I will admit. But if you're aware in your mind of why you're doing it and the principles behind it and the values, 
And if you are aware of the values of being exclusive with someone just out of fear, it's different if you're going to have kids together and raise a family. It's the only time I would, without a doubt, just jump straight into the, okay, we're just sharing this canoe together, no one else. Maybe here and there we can have a threesome, we'll get someone else involved, but we'd both have to be present, you know? And that's the thing with these things, like, you've really got to be just open and clear with your intentions with each other, communicate what's going on each step of the way, no su nasty surprises, and you've got to be honest, you know? And I find that if, if you just respect each other as individuals with the freedom to live as they want, and if you just rely on the love existing naturally and bringing you together naturally without need for stipulations and consequential punishments if they're not followed, if you just let things be and let things unfold, then things will blossom naturally and uh, you will have less to worry about at the end of the day. You won't feel the need to have to provide everything. You'll know that your partner will find it elsewhere if not in you, but at the end of the day, they will come back to you because you're the one out of them all. You're the main one, you know? And you, you skip all that added pressure of being there everything, which is a pretty impossible feat to achieve sometimes. Yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. And don't forget to subscribe and like and share because uh, all the supporters appreciate it, guys. Thank you.